everyone, welcome to another video. Today what we're going to do is quickly break down the main characters in Season 1, Episode 1 of Luther. The notes that I've put along with the characters are sort of the main points for you to be aware of for each of the characters. What I would advise that you guys do is take these as a starting point, look at, uh, sort of watch the episode again, look over your own notes and add any more detail to them that you think are necessary. So this, the idea behind this video is that it's just basically like a springboard for you guys to then go into your own studies with. So let's get started. We start with Luther, who is sort of a character who has this massive reputation. Now, the reputation that he has is both positive and negative. On the one hand, he's incredibly dedicated and he uses sort of different levels of intellect to try and come up with the solution to the crime and to solve the puzzle. But this dedication can turn into obsession and the working outside of the box often means that he breaks the rules. So he's a character who sort of exists in a state of grey in that he's neither good nor bad. He's sort of somewhere in between. Now we know from the first episode that he's also emotionally damaged in that one, he let Madsen fall to his presumed death, um, but also that the the impact and the toll that this has taken on his personal life with Zoe has led to him being sort of more damaged than we would um, sort of expect or more damaged than perhaps he lets on. He's also incredibly perceptive, so he notices things, small details that other people perhaps miss. So Luther's the one who identifies the fact that Alice has no emotion and that that's the sort of key to solving the case, whereas other people haven't necessarily noticed that, including the audience. Now he is traditionally masculine, he's masculine in terms of the way that he presents himself, the way that he acts, the way that he talks, and the fact that he does sort of initially save damsel in distress in the little in the the case of the little girl who was taken by Madsen, but also um sort of attempting to come to the rescue for Zoe and Later on, not in this episode, but later on in sort of further series, coming to Alice's defence and rescue as well. So ultimately, he both subverts and conforms to stereotypes of characters in crime dramas. He sort of meets it in terms of the way that we would expect a traditional masculine male detective to conduct themselves, but equally the fact that he exists in this area that's neither good nor bad sort of subverts those expectations as well. Madsen then, and I'm um, dealing with the characters sort of as we see them, um, so Madsen is a stereotypical criminal, he's aggressive, he's fearful, but just like, or, just like Luther he sort of exists in two different states. On the one hand he is a predator, which is why he's being chased by the police, but he's also prey because the way that that entire opening sequence is delivered, it's Madsen on the back foot all the time and looking behind him, checking to see where this mysterious man is that's eventually revealed to be Luther. So despite the fact that he is a predator, initially the audience sympathise with him and that's quite an interesting position to put your audience in, in that we sympathise with a character who is later revealed to be somebody who perhaps, are, you could argue, doesn't deserve sympathy. Reed then, uh, initially in this first episode, is portrayed as very trustworthy. I'm not going to give away anything for future seasons in case you guys want to watch them, but that's not necessarily a point that we can apply to him in his final episode. Uh, he acts as Luther's confidant, so he's the person who goes and seeks out Luther in the uh, psychiatric ward. He's the person who supports Luther after he's had uh, his sort of showdown or sh um, sort of meeting with Zoe. He apparently has a sort of moral code that he lives by, so he's not as willing to work outside of the box as Luther. Again, in this first episode, not necessarily saying that that's the case with Reed all the way through. And when we do see him in this first episode, it's normally as this sort of supportive character. So to an extent, we could say that he fills the helper character of um, Props Theory or perhaps even the donor character in Props Theory, depending on which particular extract or part of the extract you're looking at. Tella then is a very strong female, she's very very moral, follows the rules, she's the one who tells Luther that if Alice is guilty then he needs to prove it. So she's not um, not happy or not, hap not just happy to solve the puzzle, she wants justice to be done 
as it should be done. She's very understanding and supportive of Luther, but there is this idea that she needs a team to work around her when she's isolated and she's by herself, which we see when she's dealing with her boss, she seems more weak and vulnerable. Now, overall, I think we could argue that she, she subverts these traditional feminine ideals initially through the way that she dresses and the way that she looks. Now, there's nothing to say that you can't have shorter hair, you can't wear trousers, you can't wear sort of shirts and waistcoats as a woman, but when we're looking at this in comparison with the very strong masculine characters that we've got already, we can see how perhaps there's been a decision or a deliberate decision by the team to present her as somebody who is perhaps a more um, masculine female or who is a more powerful or more dominant female through those dress codes and the way that she looks. Comparatively, Alice subverts uh, both conforms and subverts to these traditional feminine representations. So we can see a difference straight away between the way that Alice is presented and the way that Teller is presented. Alice on the outside seems more feminine in the way that she wears her, wears her hair, the way that she wears her clothes, that she seems naturally to be more feminine. Um, but she does also subvert these traditional representations as well. She's a genius. And we know that through the, the discussion that she has about her IQ. This is not something that is just a description. She is literally a genius. But along with that, she is very, very calculated. And this is part of what makes up her psychopathic personality in that she understands a lot of logical things, but something like emotion, which is sort of neither logical or illogical, she doesn't really understand and she doesn't present these emotions she can't empathize or sympathize it's all just used as part of a plan to to manipulate people into her way of thinking and this also adds to her sort of seductive side as well now because of this it makes her both similar and opposite to luther because luther is very calculated luther is very perceptive and manipulates situations but he doesn't do it for his selfish needs. He does it for sort of for the greater good. Whereas Alice does it for selfish reasons, which we know and are not positive reasons. Ultimately, she's very enigmatic. Initially in this episode, she is enemy only, but in future episodes, she does become an ally to, to Luther. And I think that's something that we see or that's hinted at in their showdown on the bridge at the end where Luther, you know, sort of reveals that he hasn't taken the evidence and that he doesn't need the evidence to, to send her to jail. So Zoe then, again, traditionally feminine, and you can see the difference again between a traditional sort of feminine representation in Zoe compared to perhaps a non-traditional representation in Teller just through the way that they look. But she is discon tented with her life with Luther she's not happy and perhaps this is a sort of element of feminism coming through in that she's not happy with Luther but she's emotionally and intellectually smart enough to know that she needs to get out of that situation and to face that situation she also has a very high profile job which for a modern audience would be more expected although the job that she has you could argue is more sort of geared towards helping others, which is a more feminine trait. So to an extent, she fulfills these stereotypical roles within the show. Mark, then as our final character, he's the direct opposite to Luther. So he is um, sort of partly traditionally masculine, but we also see him as being more in touch with his emotions, which could, you could argue makes him more sort of metrosexual. He's honourable, and Luther, I suppose you could argue, is honourable in, in, a, in a way, but I suppose Mark is more traditionally honourable. And I think part of the reason that he is Luther's opposite and the way that he's presented is obviously as an opposite to Luther is that he fits more into these subgenres than the main genre. So Mark doesn't really have a role in the crime drama aspect of the show, but he does have a role in the romance subgenre and he does have a role in the sort of action subgenre of the show as a whole. Hopefully you guys found that useful. There's a few key terms that you guys can use to um, add to your own work. 
If you don't know what any of these key terms are, I would suggest that you look them up. You perhaps make a little media glossary. So what you could do is have a separate document where all of the key terms that you're not aware of that we've gone through in these videos, you're making sort of definitions for them. And that's something that you can look back on throughout your study. If you would like to, please subscribe, hit the button down below for every new subscription. There will be a shout out at the beginning of the video. So just make sure that your subscriptions are private or that you send me a message through social media or in the comment section to let me know that you have subscribed. And then I will be giving you guys a shout out in the next video. You can also get in touch with me, as I said, through social media. So I have an Instagram, which I don't post on too much, but I do take questions or comments on there if you would like. I have a Twitter at media underscore revision where I take most of my questions and comments. Um, so you can post on there or you can just leave me comments down in the comment section below and I do my best to answer every single one. So if you would like to pop a comment, suggestion, idea, question below in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you. And I shall see you guys tomorrow for another video.